Another edition of Bit Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Hello, everyone. My name is John Polnick, along with my partner, Michael Deeb. I am recording from Las Vegas Container Park in downtown Las Vegas, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, who is in Deeb Studio in San Francisco. What do you got to say, Michael Deeb? Good morning. JP, uh, we are going to look at a very cool car that was never sold in the United States originally. I'm very excited about today's car. Um, we reached out to the seller, and it turns out it's a friend of ours, so I'm even more excited. We literally just found that out right before we go live with the show. So I'm super excited about today's car. This is going to be fun. All right. Very good. Well, for those of you who are just now joining the Nerd Herd, you, you, you're like, what is Bid Nerds? What is this show all about? What we do on this show is we find the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites like Bring a Trailer Cars and Bids and More. Uh, and then we have a conversation about that specific car, the model, its history, that specific car, what's happened with that car, everything that the ad says about that car. And we kind of dig into it and we analyze it. Uh, and then what we the really interesting thing is that we make a prediction is what's going to happen with that car's auction. And you can play along. It's a lot like the price is right, except that you don't win anything. Uh, neither do we. Uh, by the way, we don't know what we're doing. We're really kind of bad at this. Uh, but we do have a lot of fun, so play along with us. We enjoy having you guys put uh, in the comments below your predictions Woo! on these cars. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, shout out to our good friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas. Uh, if you are in the market for a classic Porsche uh, and you don't want to deal with all the auctions and all the rules and shipping cars and all that kind of stuff. You can just go to God and Porsche of Las Vegas. They're a classic Porsche uh, dealer and uh, hey, they will get you hooked up. Oh, what? I, I got a question for you. Did, did uh, God unveil their uh, classic restoration project? Card? They have an event coming up uh, very oh, soon. Coming up. Going okay. to you. So all yeah, we got it. Right. We'll talk about that after it happens. Cause you're going to go to that, right? I am. So Probably. make sure you RSVP. Yeah. If you want to be part of that, it's going to be pretty cool. Every yeah. year they do a classic uh, restoration thing. I happen so to know. You don't have to talk. What's that? Oh, you do. I was just going to ask you. You don't have to reveal, but do you know what the car is? I do, do you know? and I can say... You have inside information, and you're holding out on your partner? <laughs> I, I will give you a one-word clue. Fans of this show will will, will will probably know what it is, and I. but I th we don't. We only have three fans, so uh, it's not really yeah. that big a deal. I don't think I'm letting anything out of the bag. Pinnacle is the word I'll use. Pinnacle. Uh, oh, for friends of the nerd. Cool. If you're a part oh, of the nerd herd, you know cool. what kind of card it is. Don't reveal it. Yes. I don't know. Put, right. in the, get, put in the comments below. Let us know what, what kind of card you think uh, God and Porsche is going to be yeah. restoring on this yeah. year's project. We can, yeah, we can guess. We can yeah. guess. That's very, very exciting. Very exciting. All, All right. right. Well, uh, speaking of exciting, let's get to today's car. This really is a pretty one. This is an interesting car. Uh, oh. Tell us all about it, Michael D. What do we got? Okay, JP, not on our shores. The 1977 Porsche Carrera 3 liter, uh, oftentimes referred to as a C3. Um, God, there's so much uh, history to unpack when you talk about this car. So uh, in 1974, when we moved to the G body, Porsche continued to make the MFI, the 2.7 liter MFI motor. Um, in Europe, but the US Carrera was, although a magnesium block and 2.7 liters, it was not an MFI car, it was a CIS car. It made like 35 horsepower or less. Um, Porsche made the MFI Carrera in Europe in 74, 75, and 76. And in 1976, they started to add another car to the Carrera lineup, the Carrera three liter. Basically it used the then just released three liter turbo motor without the turbo and they made a three liter block in 1976 and 1977 so imagine going to a porsche dealer in 1976 in europe or in germany and you had a choice of carrera with a 2.7 mfi or a three liter with some other type of fuel injection i'm not exactly sure the interesting thing comes from this john the 2.7 carreras made 210 horsepower and they revved beautifully up to their near 7,000 RPM uh, red line. The three liter Carreras didn't rev quite as high. They made a bit more torque. The horsepower rating was only 200. And as such, these cars have for decades been sort of overlooked or 
unloved because they didn't offer a greater performance figure on paper to the car that preceded it when you looked at the 2.7 liter MFI. And as the 73 RS, the original um, sort of housing of that motor, the first car to, to feature that motor, became a legend, uh, the legend grew with the 74, 75, and 76s, and they've gone um, to extraordinary values in the marketplace, especially over the last you know, 10 to 20 years, not 10 years at least. Carrera three liters are just starting to get their due. Um, and even though they didn't make as much power on paper, because the cars had more torque, these cars arguably drive better than the cars that are worth two and three hundred thousand dollars the 74 75 and 76 2.7s so the three liter non-turbocharged uh carrera blocks are really cool cars and because they were never sold in this country they're very rare to find in the marketplace here so if i didn't confuse anybody with that intro our car is on bring a trailer it's showing 37,000 miles, but it's true mileage unknown. The car is offered for sale in Daly City, California, and is offered by a friend of the show, uh, Naveed. Uh, shout out to Naveed, who does a lot of work, um, you know, either behind the camera or in front of it. Uh, he's a big car guy in the marketplace and a really dear friend of the show's. Eat with Naveed on the gram. Um, Naveed is selling this car arguably for, probably for a client. This car, JP, is really cool. So what we're looking at now is a 77 European Carrera with a big motor. The car has, the motor has been rebuilt. It's now a twin plug and features PMO individual throttle bodies and uh dyno sheets are going to be provided that prove that this car is putting down just over 300 horsepower naveed naveed describes the motor's delivery as being very similar to a car that might have been set up to do track duty i don't want to call it a race car because i don't want to put my words on it uh, but it's it's one of those things where you're on the throttle and this thing's making big power um, or you're off of it it's it's a it's a it sounds by uh, naveed's description to be um you know on the aggressive side but all the things are there jp it's got sports seats with hound's tooth it's got refinished rsr sort of anodized to 16 inch fuchs this car would have come on 15 so you know that's sort of an upgrade it's got the turbo carrera wing uh, i'm sure jp in the pictures you notice those aftermarket um, uh, they're like boxster brake upgrades and it's got the what we used to call pea shooters the the twin uh central outlet exhaust um and this 77 being a european it has the european little bumperettes on the on the end uh it's in platinum metallic the sort of champagne gold and the Carrera script on the sides. It's a sunroof car. Um, the suspension has all been done up. This is a ton of car for the money. I mean, JP, I would suggest that this car would keep up with anything uh, through maybe a 996. You know what I mean? Like, like I think this you could put this car up against any air-cooled car and it could hold its own. Um, it looks like it sits just right. It's got more aggressive uh, wheels and brakes. And it's got 300 horsepower in a car that, JP, probably weighs 24 2500 pounds i mean this is this is a very hot car um the interesting thing too here now jp i'm just going to say one more thing it's on a west virginia title uh naveed as the seller is suggesting that um uh the parts can be provided if you wanted to you know put the air pump and the cats on this thing and choke it down you would be robbing some of the horsepower that's there but you could get this car to pass smog in california uh the car is photographed um, as being in California on a California blue plate. Um, so this car some, has some uh, California history in its past. So it's a really interesting car and could be a ton for the money. Um, but that that promise of making it past smog in California may not be enough for somebody to pay a premium for this car, uh, which I just I would deserve. Um, if you were going to try and duplicate this car in any way, you'd be spending well over a hundred grand. It'll be interesting to see where this car falls just a couple of days from now. So JP. How much love would you have for a platinum gold three liter making 300 horsepower and looking as stylish as this car does? I really love almost everything on that car. Yeah, I, I really do like the way this car looks. It's, <clears throat> there's a lot, <clears throat> look, this is a hot rod, right? I mean, so it's not yes. really, it, it's like, okay, yeah, it's a three liter. Uh, sorry guys, we're having some, uh, I'm having a couple of technical issues here. Um <clears throat> 
I love all the stuff that's been done to it. The Carrera script, you know, the, uh, the, the T pedal, uh, anodized wheel on the Fuchs, uh, the, you know, the, the brushed, uh, the brushed aluminum, uh, pea shooters, like you were saying, the houndstooth seats. Uh, I'm surprised that he didn't go with like a prototypo or mod seven or something like that, but really it all comes down to this engine. Look at that thing. That is bespoke with the PMOs and, and I mean, 300 horsepower. It's gotta be just like, wow. What surprises me on a car like this, as great as it is with all the mods that they've done to it, since it's modded, it's really not going to bring a premium from a collector point of view because, you know, the whole three liter 77 should bring a little extra for the collector side. But you've kind of like blown all that out with the with the RS door cards and just, you know, there's so many things that have been done to this car that are that are essentially outlaw. Why not go with RS bumpers and save yourself another, you know, 250 pounds by removing those G body bumpers. I mean, that's a lot of weight with a car with this much horsepower, uh, that would drastically improve, uh, the, what is probably already really fantastic performance. Yeah. Twin plug. Did I say twin plug? They did a twin plug conversion and PMO um, individual throttle bodies. I mean, this car when it when it hits, it, it comes on the cam and it's just like bang. Uh, it's a really neat car. Um, for sake of argument, uh, you know, our friend Yuri uh, had Rafi build him a seventy-five Euro Carrera with the two point seven. Mm-hmm. Rafi rebuilt that car with a two point eight kit. It makes two hundred and forty horsepower, and I've driven that car, and it is to this day one of the nicest air cooled G body nine elevens I have ever tasted. And it's wonderful. And this car makes 60 horsepower more. I mean, this thing must be insane. Yeah. So I'd like to know more about the suspension. It looks like it's got Bilstein's, but it just, it looks like it has a stock sway bar and, you know, it doesn't really have any, you know, so I'm a little concerned about that having that much power on it. There's a strut tower brace, but that's, that's stuff you can easily fix. You know, no matter who, yeah, no matter who buys this car, you're going to play with it, right? Like Mm -hmm. for your taste, you'd be like, let's go RSR bumpers. Um, I love the way it looks because, um, if JP, if you could pull up a shot of the, sure. the front of the car, um, our American G bodies have two reflectors, right? So we just have a rubber bumper strip across the middle of the front of the car between the headlights. But the European cars have those rubber bumper at littles on the corners there. So you get just a single orange reflector. I love that look, coupled with the fact that there's no fog lights on this car. And the H4, H5 uh, headlight conversion has black rings around it. So I just all the details on this car work. I really like the way it is. But JP, this is what an old fart I've become. I would actually get rid of those 16s, even though they look good. And I'd go back to the 15s with a thicker sidewall tire to complete that sort of more vintage look. I'm becoming old fashioned. I just, ugh, I hate saying it, but I think I would go with that. I think it would look just that for me, just that tinge bitter to have that little bit thicker sidewall, even if it's a more modern compound, like some vintage Pirellis or vintage uh, Michelins or something. But otherwise, this car got to be a hoot to drive. Isn't that the appeal of old 911s that you can do so much to them to change the overall totally. look? I, I, I'm with you. I, yeah. I like all the black trim, the, the Carrera script down the side just really sets yep. off what is otherwise a pretty uninteresting color. Um, you know, the, 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 the whole beige thing would normally be an old man's car, but this one just looks really hot and the anodized wheels just really set it off anyways. Okay. You know, what would you do with this car? If you got it, uh, would you mod it or would you bring it back to stock? Does it make sense to go back to stock? I don't know. What do you think this car is worth? Uh, Michael D given all. So that is a really interesting question. Um, and the question of the day. So our car closes basically three days from now. John, believe it or not, our car is at thirty-one, just thirty-one thousand um, dollars. On uh, where am I? I'm looking at my notes. On just three bids, and mm. that's kind of surprising to me because this is a car that's hard to replicate. So I just wonder if, you know, somehow in the comments when David was trying to describe that he could provide the pieces to get this car to pass smog if it decided to, if the buyer decides to keep it in California, if he didn't, maybe just didn't do a good enough job of conveying that because. It appears with so little action on the car um, that he might have tempered some of the potential buyers. We will see. Bring a trailer and old Porsches are certainly the best candidates for having a flurry of a finish when it comes time for the the clock to expire. This car should bring $100,000, I would think. Um, But right now, it's just not showing it's going to go that far. Um, 
I still have a lot of promise in this car because I know how good it is. So I'm going to go eighty five thousand uh, dollars. But I don't know if that would be enough. Like the the seller might think that the car is worth more. The seller might be expecting six figures. I just don't know. I don't know the whole story in this car. But I'm going to say eighty five thousand dollars. And I'm curious to see if that's a fail to meet a reserve that somebody might have either Navid or the, the consigner or whatever the case may be. Um, because I do think that this car should be worth a hundred, but I think it's so hard when there's questions about whether or not that car will pass smog. Um, and I just don't know of too many Carrera threes that are in California legally. So th this is an interesting, there's, there's a few hurdles to clear on the road to the sale for this particular lot. Uh, and I think that's part of the intrigue on, on watching this one close. So JP, I'll send it back to you at 85 grand, but holy moly, this thing could, could go anywhere. It could drop on either side. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not making it easy for me to make a bid too. I I'm, I'm, you know, questioning whether or not I just go right over the top or right underneath. It's not going to be, we're not going to have a big spread here. Um, I think one thing that we've typically seen, what, what we tend to see with hot rods is that engines uh, bring money, right? You know, when you have something like yes. a twin plug like this, uh, people will pay for it because they know that that stuff is not easy to replicate. It's one thing to slap some wheels and some stickers uh, and some cool cosmetic stuff, even suspension bits and stuff like that, which are more complex to add to the cars uh, and can have a big performance upgrade, don't necessarily equal big uh, performance when it comes to sale numbers. Um, but engines tend to do that, um, especially if you're going hot rod. Uh, and this car is definitely hot rod. So I, I that said, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the dice and hope for our friend, uh, and I'm gonna go eighty. You said eighty five. I'll go eighty seven. Yeah. You know, um, oh, and good. just say uh, I, I think it'll bring a little bit more, um, which is interesting uh, and and probably dumb given that we just saw last week uh, what was that ninety six C two nine nine three with what, 50,000 miles only bring 87 grand. So yeah. will a hot rotted mid year, uh, kind of rare 77 three liter with the, you know, with the fender flares and a hopped up engine, will that bring the same money as a basically all stock perfect C two nine nine three, which is probably yeah. the better car. Uh, boy, right. uh, but you know, apples to oranges, right? So what do you guys think? Which one would you rather have? And what, what do you yeah. think this car will go for? Do you think our numbers I, are way off? Do you we way higher? What are you going to say, Michael? I, I hope when we come back that, you know, that this car, you know, hits a hundred grand and, mm. and they got the money for this thing, but it just seems like there's some cobwebs to clear, you know, with regards to yeah, the, the California right thing, the, the, the California yeah. thing, given that this is a, this is a car that should live in California. I mean, this is yeah. the type of I I mean, want California is where these I, cars should be. Yeah, man. When I met you, John, mm. I had a car like this in my sights. It was like a Baltic blue, um, uh, C3 that a guy in Southern California had imported from Germany. And I was planning to buy that car and I wasn't certain I could even smog that car in Nevada which is why I didn't buy it. But it was um, really rare slick top. It had um, a Carrera wing, even though the car was all dark blue metallic, the Carrera wing was all rubber. Like it had no mm. painted parts mm. on it. Have you seen that before mm -hmm. on, a, on a 911? Yeah. So it had that. Um, beautiful seats, good gearbox. Um, my friend, the guy who was going to sell it, was going to put the Carrera script on it for me because I thought that would be really cool. Um, and I was excited to have a really unusual G body in this country. Um, but man, at the 11th hour, I got cold feet and I, I, I was really scared that I burned the relationship with the seller. Cause I knew the guy uh, and I thought he was really mad. Cause I, I really did sort of dip on him at the last minute, but I just, I, I was like, how am I going to get caught holding the bag if I start to finance this thing and I can't even register it. So I, I just chickened out and walked away. Mm. Well, I do know, you know, a guy that has those 15 inch Fuchs that you're looking for. With yeah, him, right? exactly. Yeah. All Boom. right, everybody. Uh, what do you think is going to happen with this auction? Let us know in the uh, comments below. Uh, and while you're doing that, hit the subscribe, like, and notification button if you haven't done that already. And if you have, then share one of our Bid Nerd videos so other people can join the Nerd Herd and uh, playing play along with us. It is more fun with more viewers. We have two or three. So if you get two or three <laughs> more, that's like doubling it. It's great. You guys can really help us out a lot. No, it, 
and, and I'm serious. Uh, we really do appreciate you guys watching the show uh, for those of you who do regularly. Uh, so let's go ahead and get in the fire up the future machine and uh, find out what Ooh. happens with this car's auction right after this. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? It is going to be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. Gotten Porsche of Las Vegas. And welcome back to Bid Nerds, everyone. Thanks for sticking around and hitting that subscribe, like, and notification button. Shout out to our good friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas uh, for supporting the show. If you guys are looking for a Porsche uh, or any classic car or uh, any classic Porsche, whatever, give Steve a call over there and see if he can help you out. You might have something in inventory. Uh, they came out to uh, Cars Un Cafe this weekend here in Las Vegas, uh, the last uh -huh. Sunday of the month, and uh, they brought a beautiful gold old 911 SC, uh, not unlike this one that we've been talking about. Everyone's Ooh. on pins and needles trying to figure out what this thing was worth. Michael Deep, how did we do with our predictions? What's up? What happened? Pretty good. This car yep. did really well, JP. Check it out. The Twin Plug 77 Carrera 3, the European example uh, that was brought to market by our friend Naveed, sold on Bring a Trailer for a fantastic number. John, just a review. I said 85,000 and again, you took the over. I always get, I get so angry when you take the over because that makes me feel like I left money on the table and dang damn it, that's exactly what happened. The car sold for $95,911 on 28 bids on Bring a Trailer, making the consigner, um, the owner and the buyer all very happy. In fact, my partner was happy, but the only person in this deal that lost was me. Dang damn it. Uh, rumor has it, John, that the reserve was originally billed to be around six figures and that they pulled the reserve uh, because they were satisfied with the number where it sat. And then the car ultimately tripped for that number. So there you go. Um, you know, one of those 25th hour deals to uh, get it just to get it to sold and down the market. So there there it is. The 77 Carrera 3. I think this car is stunning. Uh, based on that engine, John, uh, it's a car I would have loved to own. I imagine this would be a car you could probably outdrive a lot of younger cars with. Uh, it's a real looker. It's a ton of value here, man. For them, for under for under a hundred thousand dollars, I think that's uh, that's a lot of car for the money. You couldn't rebuild this car for less than one hundred and sixty, in my opinion. So there it is, man. The Carrera three with three hundred horsepower. What a what a fantastic car. You surprised by that result? Uh, I'm not. I mean, the engine on this car alone really, you know, I think we talked about that before the break. The engine sells. I mean, you yeah. get something like this because, look, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you could have gotten a, a really the nicest SC in the world for for and saved yourself 20 grand or something like that. Um, yeah. And the fact is, yeah, you could have, but it wouldn't have had this powertrain. Getting a hot rod like this uh, with that kind of power, I mean, 300 horsepower, that is that is going to make this car scoot. That is going to make this car one hell of a driver. So yeah, I think that number's right. And I think they uh, level headed uh, results in the sense that they, you know, lowering the reserve was the right call on this. Pulling it. Yeah. Um, they yeah. Pulled it. They just the, the reserve. If the reserve was higher than if the, if the reserve was in the six figure mark, it's not going to do that. This, this engine in a backdate car uh, with a wide body, uh, is going to bring yeah. over a hundred for sure. Uh, you know, but, but not in a narrow body, not with a 77, uh, the, the, this was the right move. This is the right number. This is kind of reflective of, I think of what the market is. This car does not look, we're seeing huge numbers still in air cooled nine elevens that are blue chip, perfect, original, low miles, factory setups, and that kind of stuff. It's really difficult for cars that are modded to really bring the big money. We were seeing big money yeah. mod hot rod cars six months ago, a year ago, but that yeah. kind of thing is really, really, really cooled off. So a car like this that was done right, um, this is about where I would expect it to go. And I would guess, um, frankly, that the prices of these are probably going to steadily fall. I don't see um, hot rods like this 
gaining much value anytime soon, especially given that it, the with the inflationary push. This is a car that you're just not going to be able to, the, the only person that could buy this car is someone that has the money. Uh, if you want to try to get a loan for this, uh, you can get loans for classic cars. There are companies out there that will do it, of course, uh, but they're they're charging some big and big, big, big interest rates. Obviously, now with interest rates on everything seven, going up, seven um, and eight percent and up. I mean, yeah, yeah the interest right? rate is bonkers. Yeah. So yeah, so something like this, you just have to have the money. And the thing is, there's still a lot of money out there. There's still inflation is still a thing. There's st- the feds are still printing money. Uh, there's all kinds of weirdness going on. Um, but uh, this car. Yeah, uh, something like this is a great car to have. Uh, if you want a car like this, if you want the performance, if you want the look, uh, I think that's about what you're going to have to pay for. I think your number, though, Deeb, uh, six yeah. months from now, <laughs> is is more in line. Well, yeah, I, yeah, it, it's hard to say. It's hard to assume that in the short term that the buyer could maybe turn around and get that number back for it. Um, I don't think so either. So anyway, but I think he'll enjoy Like if you're going to get stuck with a car, what, what better car to get stuck with if yeah. even if the value drops out a little bit? what the hell that that's a inimitable car for the money uh as far as performance and it's a beautiful looker in that in that palladium or platinum metallic whatever they call the the champagne color it's gorgeous well you know we use the word stuck a lot of times because when in this show we're we're talking about you know prices and and value and that sort of thing and you know but i i can't imagine the person that bought this car bought it necessarily as an investment. I mean, anytime you buy any kind of, you know, hard asset for this kind of money, you have to think about the money that you're spending on it. But I doubt the person thought it was thinking of this as, okay, uh, this is like my 401k, you know, I'm, I'm building my, you know, uh, what, yeah. what stocks am I going to put in my mutual fund or am I going to buy crypto or whatever? You know, this is a car that someone saw and I'm like, yeah, I want a hot rod. 911 G body with that kind of power and performance. Cause honestly, what do you, what else do you get for that kind of money right now? Even, yeah. even with prices falling, uh, I, I don't know yeah. what you get that would compare with a car with a G body with 300 horsepower. That's just like mind boggling. Yeah. That's perfect. That's, that's, that's the kind of power you want in a car like this. Oof, man, so is the word amazing. stuck? Should we be careful using that word in the future? What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's probably not the right word. It's probably not the right word, but yeah, we, we should get, it's just, I say it because so many times when I've been in the car business, you know, somebody comes in to trade in a car and they just, they're upside down in the value. Like they owe more than the car is worth. They have a firm grip on the car. They're sort of stuck with it because they can't get out of it. Um, I don't think this person's ever really going to be stuck. Even if that, um, if that goes down to my value, uh, the number I put in a couple of years from now is still five thousand dollars a year to pay for the depreciation on a car you enjoy driving for a couple of years. That's not that's still not a bad number, yeah. uh, especially at a hundred thousand dollar car. So yeah, stuck is the wrong vernacular for what we're what we're trying to assess here. Well, I mean, and look, you know, you, you talk about your dealership experience. I mean, we have been in a weird period, for, and and people have kind of been lulled into this idea that that, you know, cars aren't depreciating. Yo, okay, you buy a car and it's going to appreciate. That's not, yeah. you know, yeah. historically how this works. Usually cars yeah. are terrible investments and they always depreciate um, unless you're buying something that's a super collector car. But now it's like everything that's old has become a collector car. Uh, I think that, again, you know, people are talking about this bubble with the air-cooled Porsche world and they keep saying, oh, it's a bubble, it's a bubble. But Look, the things that drive the air-cooled Porsche world are not just people trying to get into an investment class on the upswing to try to make a profit, right? The idea that, okay, you buy something uh, as an investment on the way up and that you're going to be able to sell it to someone at a higher price, that's what you do with an investment. Um, and then a lot of times, you know, what happens is that if you, at, at the peak of that bubble, then you have p- prices falling. That's when people are going, Oh, okay. We've reached the top. So we're going to cash out here. And that's what a lot of times causes a plummet. Um, and sometimes people will pick up an asset on the way down thinking that it's going to bounce back up again, whatever. That's just not 
the way you look at something like this. These cars are romantic. These cars are usable. These cars uh, are a ticket to a community that a lot of people want to be a part of. And these are things that you cannot necessarily put a price on. If you want to go to Luftecult Weekend in LA or Toy and Lit Show or something like that, it is a completely different experience going there in a Macan than it is in an air-cooled Porsche, right? Um <laughs> If you are oh, in, uh, if you own an air cooled car and you're part, you feel like you're part of the club. If you're not in an air, if you don't own an air cooled car and you're not driving around that air cooled car, you're just not that cool, right? Um, <laughs> people buy these cars for reasons. Guys our age want them because they were the car that we wanted when we were, you know, young, and now we have disposable income. And young people want them because they want that, uh, they want that prestige and that class. And then everyone in between wants them uh, because they're freaking fun to drive. So I don't think there is necessarily a bubble. I think there is a certain percentage of the owners of these cars that are buying them as investments, and we are seeing a shakeout of them with the cars that are not blue chip cars, the cars that aren't great builds like this one or cars that aren't like clicking all the boxes, those cars are kind of like shaking out the crypto bros. It's like when, when you had a crash in the crypto prices, it just shook off all the, you know, Johnny come lately investors. And that's what we're seeing right now in, if you want to call it a correction, it's just basically shaking off those idiots that just got in just for the flip. What do you think of that take Michael D? Yeah, I, 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 I think so too. I agree. <laughs> you do agree. All right. Well, there you go. We are in agreement. Are you guys in agreement out there? Let us know in the uh, comments below. We'd sure like to get your take on it. Is there a bubble? Is it going to burst? Are the prices of these just going to plummet back down to below what it was before? Uh, is the end of the world coming? Are the nukes flying? That's a possibility too. No one needs a 9-11 uh, in the apocalypse. Yeah. But uh, I mean, if they remade yeah. Mad Max right now, like not a continuation or not a reboot like they did with uh, with that last one. If they just yeah. like literally remade it, would he be driving a muscle car or would he be driving an air cooled nine eleven? What do you think? Ooh, an air cooled nine eleven would be sick. Right hand drive down in Australia, that'd be so that'd be pretty dope. Heck, heck yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. No! Get those words!